In 2017, while I was on tour for my 14 days experiment, I stopped in Iowa and met up with Ray Fredrickson. Ray ran one of the best bar table tournaments of the 1980s. It was a well-run tournament that always had a good payout, which is why every top player would show up year after year. So if you're ready, let's get started. Barrack Shootout was a tournament that brought everybody together, top players, hustlers, wannabes, stake horses, everyone. We had uh, a small tavern in Clinton, Iowa, where we packed in 500 people in the bleachers, and that was almost every night, and several hundred would stay all night, because when the tournament was over, we played the last tournament matches at like 10 o'clock, and then they would have mini tournaments, several mini tournaments that would start, and the people would leave and come back in and pay a fee just to watch that. And when you have the likes of, and you gotta remember the 1980s, we had Mike Siegel was by many the top player in the country. Jim, Jimmy Reed, Buddy Hall, Alan Hopkins, Keith McCready, um, Larry Hubbard, little Dave Matlock, who was the quote unquote greatest bar table player, little Rich Rich Geiler from Seattle, Rich the Hat, Danny High Pockets, St. Louis Louis Roberts. I mean, the list just goes on. It was a who's who. So when you went in the losers bracket, you were you were looking for trouble. We had guys Larry Hubbard, and Terry Bell, who both uh, they started the uh, Bush League. In St. Louis, they were both uh, great bar table players, especially Terry was a big ball player. Um, guys like John Schubert, big ball player. Um, Larry had won probably 70 major tournaments in the 70s. Could play everything, straight pool, eight, eight ball. They were just phenomenal players. And we had uh, local players that got pretty good. Uh, here's a picture here of Rich Sager. And uh, Rich went to the Seattle area and hung out in the Northwest for quite a while and came back and he ended up in St. Louis. And for people who don't know Rich, Rich Sager is a tremendous player. I'm sure he was in the top four or five in St. Louis at one time. And he got his going running with Dave Yeager from Clinton. The local players were Steve Minichi, Tony Maresca, um, Rich, who had came back by then, and of course Dave. Dave was Dave was a very unknown great player, and anybody that ever ran into Dave Yeager, they would soon remember him. Six foot four and 135 pounds. He was pretty, pretty different frame, especially when he had his big afro. Um, Dave played phenomenal pool. He uh, he lost the uh, year Larry Hubbard won the tournament in '82. And Dave was second in that tournament. That's Steve Minichi, and he was playing, I think it's uh, like Jesse Rivera from Denver who came with Danny Medina. This is the match with the, the finals. Um, there's a couple pictures in a row here. The finals, there was a little controversy. We had let everybody know that the tournament was a race to allow double elimination, and the finals was going to be one race to 15 which everybody knew prior to the tournament. And in, in the finals, it was David Howard and Danny Medina, which it got a little delayed because I don't know if anybody ever seen these two guys break, but it was two of the best breakers there were at that time. And Danny broke and sent the cue ball into the lights. And we had glass and bulbs to clean up and 3M came out with some, they had these clear sleeves and I had them on their table. Some reason I didn't have them on that table, but you could put these clear plastic sleeves over the fluorescent tubes, just so if they got did hit, the glass would stay inside the plastic, and you just replaced the tube. But Danny got a little upset because David beat him. I think it was like 15 to 12 or 13. and thought there should be another set, another match afterwards. But it was one race to 15 in the finals and it was they both just played tremendous pool 
We had a lot of the Quad City contingent would come up. We even had a few youngsters there that got excited about pool, one being your own tour. Here's Mike. Uh, this is Mike Massey, but if you ever get a chance to see these pictures of Mike compared to Mike today, when they called him the Tennessee Tarzan, I mean, Mike was a trim 230, 225 pound man. He was a lot of man. This picture, he's playing Terry Bell. This picture here is Howard Vickery, and he's playing, uh, I think that's Chewy Rivera right there. Um, I think that was the only tournament of, of all the six years I ran the tournaments, that was the only one that Howard came to. Um, I know Howard was from Ohio, and I didn't know Howard real well other than through the billiard community. Um, but he had won, he had just won something, uh, pretty big term, and I can't, I can't remember now what it was, but people remember there was a span there a couple of years that Howard Vickery was pretty, pretty potent player out of Ohio. Here's one that I do know, Ring Game Willie. Anybody that ever liked Ring Games knows Willie Munson from Milwaukee. Willie's won numerous state titles and that up in the Milwaukee, played a lot of Milwaukee, Chicago area. And Willie just, he can be always known to be sleeping in a chair somewhere. The minute somebody says Ring Game, it's like an alarm clock. Well, all of a sudden Willie wakes up. He just loves the Ring Games. This was, uh, this picture is little Joe Bellapondo. Last year's tournament, an 83 tournament, I'm not sure if this picture's from 83. Joe started our tournament off that year, the first round, he beat Dave Matlock, in which I'm sure a lot of people thought was an upset. Joe played phenomenal, and uh, he, uh, he sent Dave Matlock to the loser's bracket where uh, Dave ended up playing uh, Mike Siegel in the uh, first round in the loser's bracket. How, how, do you, how strong is that, the loser's bracket? First round you get is Mike Siegel and Dave Matlock. Pretty sporty tournament. This next picture is a, uh, a Wisconsin player, Randy Lamar. Randy used to come down there, he used to be a pretty good contingent. Willie Munson, uh, Kevin Stanell, Bill Milkey before he moved out to California. Fred Reiser used to bring a bunch of them down. Peg Ledman, that went on to be the president of the Women's Pool Association. Um, Rob Dobosinski, Jeff Carter, there was, we always had a big contingent from Wisconsin. Of course, this next guy in this picture doesn't need much of a explanation who he is. Dave Matlock, anybody ever played bar table pool? If you played that guy with the big rock, it was like a nightmare, as Keith McCready would say. It'd be like a bad dream, and it just keeps getting worse. I told a story one time, Dave Yeager and I, we were with another guy, and we ran into Matlock and uh, played him 11 ahead for 4,000. Might as well have been a race to 11, because it was 11 zip. Good night. It didn't make no difference. It, the guy, anybody that's ever watched Dave, he, even today, Dave was a great three-cushion billiard player. And I think that on a bar table especially, he could out offensively and defensively kick anybody on the bar rag. So next one is a couple of Iowa boys. Scott Kiddo, who was actually a great straight pool player from Iowa, went on. Scott, Scott's pretty well known. I think at one time he was ranked up like seventh, top 10 in the country and playing a guy who was actually his road partner for a long time, Steve Benici, who now lives down north of Austin, Texas. Terry Bell playing on this table, but in the background there, it's, uh, I think he's, I think it's Mike and Terry playing, but the next table is Stan Fimple from Omaha. It's another picture of David after he won the trophy. Here's a picture of the stage, and uh, Bob Mucci is sitting talking to Jay Helfer and somebody, and I'm on the stage, I must be getting 
must be getting tired there. I'm hiding my eyes, so I think I'm talking to David Howard. Bob Mucci uh, set up. He brought us uh, many players. He brought us uh, St. Louis Louis, Dave Matlock, Jimmy Reed, Mike Siegel, Buddy Hall. Brought maybe three or four more, and I can't even remember my old age, but uh, Bob Mucci back then, uh, if you had a tournament and you got a hold of Bob, he had a stable that would uh, make any tournament. Uh, if you got Bob to come, just advertise. You, he was bringing champions. It was, it was always amazing. David Howard uh, getting ready to get his trophy from Fred Shaman. Fred was a local Miller Light distributor who was a real pool enthusiast and uh, he couldn't wait to get involved in helping us bring a tournament to Clinton, Iowa. When you can hardly believe you could bring tournament champions to a bar table tournament, but when we put up $20,000 in 1980s, you know, it was pretty hard for players to find a tournament that they knew. I had spoke earlier about it. We, um, our very first tournaments, we got hit with a blizzard and we guaranteed, we didn't know any of this about based on X amount of players. We just said, we're going to put $10,000 in or 5000 in the beginning the, when the tournament was a little smaller. We, we said we were putting the money in, we put it in. And we got hit with a blizzard one year and only had 27 players. You couldn't even get into Clinton, Iowa. There was so much snow. And even based on the 27, I think uh, half a dozen of them were local people. But we ended up paying 12 out of 27, but everybody got paid the same pay. No guaranteed first place money stayed the same. So people knew they were gonna get paid if they came to Clinton. They weren't gonna get a rubber check or, but they knew they were gonna have to play for it too. This is a great picture here of a guy who was one of my best friends, Dave Yeager of Clinton. He's playing Larry the Iceman Hubbard. And believe me, when Dave stepped up to the table, you could have been Buddy Hall, you could be anybody, Mike Siegel. Dave, Dave was getting rooted for it. He could have played anybody and the people just wanted him to, they wanted him to win, which he did most of the time. Here's another colorful guy uh, firing the ball in who would send the crowd into a frenzy it was St. Louis Louis playing little Joe Villapondo there. I think Mike Massey's in the background. And you could never have a dull moment with Louis in the house. We had Louis do a show of shot making where we had Mike Massey did his normal show of singing and his uh, repertoire of trick shots and always had the crowd in his finger pool. But Louis, we had Louis do a thing of just shooting pool shots, throwing balls out and cutting balls that anybody who was there, it's hard to believe that Louis wasn't the best or one of the best ball pocketers ever. I mean, the man cut a ball in like a uh, bet my house because you, you can get the cash because Louis's going to make it. Let's tell some great stories. This so next one was just a team pitcher, lo local guys. Uh, the Midwest used to have Midwest Pocket Billiards Association, players from Wisconsin, Illinois, and Iowa. This was Dave Yeager and Steve Benici and Tony Maruska, myself, and a guy on the left, uh, just a local player, Ed Nelson. We had played that tournament. We lost our very first match came through the loser's bracket to double dip and win it because we didn't know you played your best players first. We played Jaeger last in the first match. Of course, he didn't get to shoot in the last round, so that wasn't a very smart <laughs> smart move, putting our good players last, thinking if it gets down to that, we got it made. Here, we're getting the trophy and the cash ready. That's what the boys were interested in was the cash. I think that was really leading down to the finals. This is a shot of uh, the mini tournaments at night. Um, it's Dave Matlock playing. You see there's none of the score things that are up there. And this is Larry Hubbard playing Randy Lamar. That must have been earlier in the, earlier in the tournament. You see in this one here is in the, the finals how nip and tuck it was. 8-7, and that match went back and forth like that. The finals with Medina, that, those guys just, uh, such a close match. 
Wish we had some pictures of the finals of uh, the 83 tournament. Buddy beat Dallas West in the finals. After Dallas had won nine and out, ran the set on Omaha John Schupert, and Buddy shot a thousand according to Pat Fleming's active stats. So it shows you the caliber of pool you had to play.